Yes, good. Um, anyway, it's lovely to see you all. Um, I hope you all had a good week um, and hopefully you've all enjoyed um, your other lectures so far. Um, so just to remind you, you can download all of the lectures that you've had so far. Obviously, they are on the general and the various chapters. I can see that um, Sarah's created a practice organisation chapter and Denise has set up a principles about nursing one. Um, when you guys actually enrol, you'll find that there's a few more. So what I'm going to try and do, I don't know if I can do this, but I will go on and relabel um, all the chapters so that you guys are clear what's pre-study and what's current study. Um, just to um, just to reassure you, I've had a few emails around kind of COVID and obviously we are in slightly odd times. Um, so as it stands, um, basically, if you have a, um, a reason, legitimate reason why you would prefer to study from home, um, for example, if you're shielding for a, a vulnerable member of the family or whether you yourselves have health risks, um, then just drop me an email because what we are having is some students are currently learning remotely. Um, now that is only permitted for theory lessons. Um, we would still strongly encourage you to come in for all practicals. Um, but as you'll see from a timetable, <laughs> which I'm going to share in a minute, um, you have got set days when you are learning from home and set days you're coming in. Um, I would obviously encourage you to come in as much as you can. COVID um, restrictions in out on the university um, and to be honest with you so far um, it's going okay <laughs> um, obviously it's a pandemic and like anywhere things are changing um, but actually for our point of view as teachers we are finding it much much better if students are in just because um, obviously you get a different dynamic than sitting at home um, but also selfishly from my point of view it, hel it helps me to get to know you guys um, which as a tutor obviously is, is my priority um, but just to encourage you and I have had a few emails from people worried um, about local lockdowns and what happens if if they're particularly those that live slightly further way and um, what do I do if, if if there's a local lockdown or is the campus still open to students and the answer is yes 100% um, but equally if you are worried and there's a few people that have already emailed and mentioned certain things then you can study remotely apart from the practical days um, so hopefully that's a little bit more encouraging um, as I say it's it's a funny time for all of us um, and we're all kind of just muddling it through together but if you are worried at all please do email me um, I'd much rather you come and tell me what you're worried about than kind of sit in silence um, equally same goes for any questions or concerns you might have um, Obviously, I know that you're communicating together, which is lovely. Um, really, really pleased that that's happened. Um, but also don't forget to contact me if you've got specific questions or concerns or anything. As I say, a lot of you have been, so it's not a dig at all. Um, it's just obviously if there is a problem, do get in contact. So what we're going to do this afternoon then is it, it, we're not going to spend a huge amount of time. Um, but what I wanted to do was to chat through your timetable with you, because um, obviously to, to, to now um, we've told you that it's Monday, Thursdays and Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays that you're in. Um, but there's a little bit of logistics just because we're quite a big group. Um, so we'd go through the timetable, just make sure you're all happy of where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and then just recap on our CVS enrolment because I'm going to start chasing you for the, those bits fairly soon. Um, and then just also give you any time if you've got specific assignment questions as well. Um, so first thing, just to remind you um, in terms, okay, just seen Alison's comment. OK, let me know if it doesn't work. As I say, there, there will be a recording as well, so don't panic too much. Um, so first thing is just a message from Ian Sortwell. Hopefully you've all received an email from him. Um, you should have received it about two weeks ago. Um, just stay, saying that we are expecting you for enrolment. We're all very excited. Um, but there are a few specific things that we needed you to do. So um, first thing is whether you can reply to Ian by Wednesday the 28th of October just so that we know that you are expecting to come obviously I'm I have a list of people I'm expecting and I've heard from people who are no longer expecting to come or people that have requested a deferral um, so as far as I'm concerned everyone in my list are people that I'm expecting which is about 40 students um, I don't think Ian has had responses from everybody um, so that's your first priority if you haven't contacted Ian if you can reply to his email and just say yep yeah, I'm all keen for enrollment thanks for the email um, I realize everyone's incredibly busy um, but it just really helps our end just so that we can make sure everything's prepared for you um, equally you will have been asked to upload a photo 
for your student ID card. Um, and if you haven't done it now, read your break next week, so half term. Um, so we're not at, well, some of us are teaching, not teaching, some of us are working, lessons, formal lessons aren't happening, um, but it does mean that it will give Ian enough time to get bits sorted for you for mon for the Monday. Um, so do first of all acknowledge him. Also, um, I'm going to pop into your first lessons on the Monday, um, so you will see me, um, and I will have your enrolment and teaching contract. So I just need you to sign that for me, because um, basically in order to um, complete your enrolments, um, we need to have that signed. So uh, again, Ian sent out a copy of that for you, um, but we will through the port log, I think it's through my port login, but send him an email because I am an, generally not the best person to ask. Um, <laughs> I actually don't know. Um, so Katie, could you phone, could you give email, Ian an email? Man, that's probably the best thing to do because I'm not sure. Um, I think it's part of your enrolment, but I'm not sure. So ask Ian and then he can help you with it. Um, so yeah, what's the thing? So <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm I am. I'm a very, <laughs> I generally know what I'm doing, but that is one part of the process. I'm not sure about whether you do it directly to Ian or not, um, but he will be able to help you. Um, so, yeah, so I'll be in in your lessons on the Monday just so you can see hi. Um, it's quite nice to come and see you guys, um, but I won't take too much time off your subject teachers, um, but I will get that all signed off. Um, so what it means is by end of the month, well, by 11 o'clock on the Monday, um, then um, it will mean that you you've, you've signed your bits. Um, the other thing that I'm going to need to see um, is proof of ID. Um, so what we can do is we, I think, again, it's just a case of me seeing your ID, confirming you are who you are. Um, passport is absolutely fine. Uh, photo card, driving license, national ID card, whatever it is, is absolutely fine. Um, those of you that are married ladies, um, I don't think we've got any married gentlemen. So if you're a married lady, um, I do also need to have a copy of your marriage certificate um, to prove that you've changed your name because sometimes um, it's not clear. So if you can bring that with you as well, that'd be wonderful. Um, and then the only other thing that we need to have is confirmation of how you're paying your tuition fees. Um, so if you have applied for a student loan, then Student Finance England will have already notified us. So you don't need to worry. Um, and basically, once we've enrolled you, which we will be doing over the Monday and Tuesday, then your fees will drop down to us automatically. And equally, your maintenance loan will also drop down automatically. Because um, I know some of you have been waiting on fees um, maintenance loan which having gone through the process of university I completely understand um, I think I went to university with about 500 pounds <laughs> before my loan came so I do completely get it um, and oh yeah I'll come back to that Amy I've got a few bits for that so I'll come back to that um, but yes yeah, so if you can bring your letter from tuition fees uh, so from Student Finance England or let us know if you if you're not eligible how you're going to pay that would be wonderful um so that's that's the bit of admin from ian um we'll talk about covid now actually while amy's brought it up so in terms of covid um HD works slightly differently to FE. So um, just to remind you, we are a shared campus um, so the actual university centre side of things we are there's a lot of us but we are proportionally smaller than the further education uh, students so they work on a different process um because basically government advice is that there is different protocols in place for further education and higher education so for you guys as further as sorry as higher education um we will require you to wear a face covering um whilst you're in communal areas so really that means that when you're indoors in the corridors um in the classrooms to a point um, in the canteen, in the library, using the toilet, then you need to wear a mask. Um, what we've agreed as staff is once you're in the classroom and you're sat down at your desk, you can obviously then remove your mask. Um, but equally, if you feel more comfortable wearing a face mask, then of course, I'm not going to tell you to take it off. Um, just in bear in mind though, if you have got a face mask on, you might need to seek a little bit clearer for the lecturers, particularly if you're in a big lecture theatre. Um, but all the classrooms have been set up to allow for student dist uh, for student distancing, social distancing, social distancing, I can't say it, um, distancing, 
Anyway, um, I'll stop trying to talk talk random. Um, so in terms of coming into the lectures, um, I say wear your masks until you come um, into the classroom. So when you're waiting outside the classroom, um, then you uh, need to wear your mask. Once you're in your classroom, sat at your desk, you can take it off. Um, from a teaching point of view, all the staff have either got visors or masks. Um, and what we tend to do is when we are closer than two metres to you, then we're putting on our visors and our masks. And um, what I've been personally doing is I have I have a mask. I don't particularly like a visor because <laughs> you have a headache. Um, so anytime I come towards you and I'm closer than two metres, um, then I automatically put my mask on. Um, generally, people are following the guidelines really well. It is worth saying if you are exempt from wearing a face mask, you do need to let me know before you come on campus. Um, but we have got an identification process. So if you are not wearing a mask for medical reasons, that's absolutely a problem. I'm not going to force you to wear one. But you do need to let us know um, because we have a um, we have a signalling system basically so that members of staff know that you don't have to wear one and therefore they won't challenge you on it. Um, there is also in in all of the in all the teaching blocks, um, there is a one way system. Um, so just make sure that you and again, you know, you're, you're going to be spending the first month probably trying to work, work, work out where things are anyway. But just to complicate it even more, um, there's a one way system in place. Um, so do make sure you follow that. Um, we've got stickers on the floor. We've got signs everywhere. It's very, very. Oh, my lights going. It's very, very self-explanatory. Um, but as I say, if you are unclear, just look around. There's quite clear labels. Um, and in every entrance, there is hand gel. Um, now, of course, I would encourage you to use your, bring your own, use your own frequently, as you all have been already. This isn't this isn't a, a current a recent thing, is it? We've all been living in the pandemic for a while. Um, but there are, um, I say, there's hand gels in every classroom um, and every entry point. So um, I personally have been quite militant about it. So anytime I see a hand gel, I tend to just use it. Um, and every classroom also has Clonel wipes, which are disinfectant wipes. So when you come in you to grab a wipe and just wipe your desk down. Um, students are doing it between classes um, and all the classrooms are being routinely cleaned during the day but again just to for your own safety um, it's always worth getting in the habit um, and to be honest uh, when you guys as you're going into nursing you'll all be highly infectious control wear anyway and you'll probably do it more than everyone else um, so that's the thing to reassure you with um, we have taken it very very seriously um, we do have a protocol in place for anybody who has covid symptoms um, i know we've got a few members of our cohort who have or are currently recovering from covid um, if you do have symptoms if unfortunately if you wake up on the monday or over the weekend and you have symptoms again please don't come in but do contact me um, and what we can do is just provide remote teaching while you're recovering um, equally if you are showing symptoms but haven't yet had a test do make wait until you've had your test results before you then come on campus um, but as i say we've we've been managing pretty well um, we, we have a track and trace policy in, in place as well. Um, and so far it seems to be working really well. It doesn't, doesn't take away obviously the stress or the reality of the pandemic, but hopefully it makes life a little bit more manageable. And what we don't want to happen is that it detracts from your learning. And so hopefully so far, I don't think it has. Um, so yeah, so that's that next point. So in terms of your um, timetable, then let's have a look. So the first thing, um, and I will put this up as a separate page as well on our team chat. Um, but the first thing that is just make you aware of is in terms of the timetable, um, because there are obviously we do a mixture of theory and practical, we have split you as a cohort into four groups. So first job is to work out which group you're in. Oh, lots of people off the end. I will change that in a minute um there are some people i can see i've clearly not made it big enough bear with me actually one second let's make it so you can all actually see it that would be helpful wouldn't it talk amongst yourselves for two seconds uh where's it gone this is why i shouldn't work from home gives me it puts me into a false sense of security um bum 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 as they talk to myself um while we're there, actually, I'll just chat, answer um, Kirsty's question. Um, in terms of holidays, um, I think they are pretty similar. Um, I don't have children myself yet, so I'm not 100% certain. Um, but my understanding is we are we are fair. So, for example, our half terms do follow the Hampshire 
um, half term situation for children. Um, the best thing to do in the short term. There we go. Um, the best thing to do in the short term is to visit our website. And if you go on to the university website, it has under information under the tab for information um they have the the all of the um you will find even it's my doorbell please ignore that um you will find the the current um course dates on there um so it's um what we what we're having this year is there is some variation because um some of the courses started a little bit later because of COVID. Um, that won't really affect you too much um, because you obviously you're starting. We've, we've staggered your start anyway. Um, there we go. Um, so that's the best thing to do is to check on there. But as far as I'm concerned, they certainly half terms full and around the same time. Um, and I think, to be honest, with things like Easter, and Christmas, we tend to break up slightly earlier. So hopefully childcare will be slightly more straightforward. But have a look on there, Kirsty. Um, as I say, it's under the um it is under the Im important information tab on the University Centre Sparshall website. So that'll all be there. Um it's cool. Now I've got this up and you can clear. So as I say, we've got four groups. Um that are um courses split into that's all right no problem um and basically this has been done purely alphabetical so there's no other rhythm to it. it i've literally just gone through as you can see all the a's b's and c's and d's f's and g's are in group a apart from sarah <laughs> and then it's literally alphabetical um i know there are some of you that have met people uh, have friends from that have come up through um but to be honest it's just fairer if i just did it randomly so it's it is literally alphabetical um in terms of teaching um the majority of the time group a and b will be together and group c and d will be together um and the timetable um is split into basically you've got two classes running simultaneously um so as lecturers we double the the sessions so instead of having 40 of you in a room we've got 20 of you in a room um we just personally feel it makes for a better teaching experience gives you the opportunity to be able to ask questions not have quite so much dauntingness that's not even a word um of um having lots of people in there um and also it just means that we can give you more attention when i was at uni i there were some lessons where i'd be in and i'd be one of 70 and it just it changes the dynamic, makes it really difficult to ask questions, uh, makes it quite daunting to ask questions um, and also makes it difficult for us to have a conversation with you. Um, so um, what we obviously what we'd like you to do is to be able to feel that you can approach us with any questions you have and actually actively engage in the lesson. And as much as we can try with 40 people, it just doesn't happen because there's only so many minutes in a lesson. So that's why we've split you into the groups. So. I say I'll upload this onto the onto the group. Um, obviously, this is being recorded as well. Um, just make sure you know which group you're in, um, and then hopefully the timetable will be straightforward. Um, what I would ask you to do is try. Well, don't swap. Um, is my immediate question. If there is a again, if there is a legitimate reason why you want to be with somebody, um, I know for example, with students in the past who have lift shared, um, then do come and speak to me separately. Um, but as it stands, these are the groups. Um, that you are in. Um, just seen a message from Alison. Um, okay, I'll come back to that. Um, yes, you will have a map. Yeah, Kirsty, that's fine. Um, so yeah, so this is your group split. So as I say, um, I'll put some resources up as well for you um, and these are where you're expected to be. Now the one thing of COVID that's making things quite helpful um, is because we are using track and trace um, the university as much as possible is trying to keep people in the same classrooms um, so that we are aware of um, obviously who you are and where you are kind of thing. So from a timetable point of view that actually makes things much much easier um, because if we have a look at look at our timetables um, as you can see, the classroom each week is kept the same. And actually, if you look at if you so this is groups one and two's timetable. Um, as you can see, for Mondays, 
and oh actually all the way through your teaching classroom apart from when you're in the labs is always SUO3. So SUO3 um because I realised that we haven't really had the chance to um like our offer holder day and things were slightly different um basically when you come on campus the building that you're looking for is known as the Sainsbury's building, um, which for those of you that have been on campus before, um, you come up the main hill opposite. Um, so you come to reception, got big main hill, it's quite a big drive. Make sure you use clutch control up that hill so you don't slide down. Um, and then there's a big car park immediately on your left hand side. The building behind that car park. So as you stand in the car park and look forward is the Sainsbury's building. Um, so the, how the numbers work is anything that is SU is Sainsbury's upper and anything that is SL is Sainsbury's lower. Now as HE we tend to occupy the Sainsbury's upper classrooms um, and 01 starts at the far end, so up near the HE study centre and then it just follows similar, like, numerically down from there. Um, so uh, group one and two, um, sorry, that's my bad. It's group A. It's group A and B. I should have read things properly. Um, it's group A and B and group C and D. I will change this before I upload it. Um, so basically, group A and B will always be in SUA three for any taught lectures. Um, now the lecturers will come to you. So it does mean that, for example, you on a Monday when you have bed from half ten to half twelve, you then have an hour lunch break. But you could, for example, if you want to go get lunch, come back to the classroom as well as using all the other social um, areas on campus. So it does give you guys a, a bit more of a permanent base as well, which hopefully will be quite nice because um, in recent years, students have uh, been kicked out of the classroom, come back somewhere else is in there. So what, that's one kind of benefit. So if we look at the timetable, are you working? I've got spinny donut. Have you guys got spinny donut? Can you see the screen? I've got red spinny donut. <laughs> Can someone talk to me and tell me if you can see the screen? Oh, it seems fine to me. OK, might just be me then. That's fine. As long as you guys can see it. Um, I can see it. It's just doing a spinny donut of death. So we'll just we'll just ignore it. And I, I'm sure it's fine your end. Um, so, yeah. So in terms of your timetable, then. So the first thing on a Monday morning is individual tutorials, um, which are technically online. I say technically because we have realised obviously for some students, well actually for all of you, that's probably the time when you're travelling in unless you live on campus. So um, I am fully prepared to give you the option. Um, what we've done is we've ha we have an extra room um, that is available to us um, that I can use and as long as I sit a good distance away from you we can literally shout at each other from the classroom which feels a little bit silly but again with covid it's understandable so on a monday from nine till ten is individual tutorials um and i see you once every half term um just to make sure that you're happy so unless you've got an individual tour you are not required in at that time which is quite nice because it means you don't start to a half ten on a monday which is you know monday morning we all hate mondays so that's quite nice um then you've got Bev from 10.30 to 12.30 for functional anatomy. Um, so I've tried to put in the time in as well, just so you can see where you are and what you're doing. Um, so you've all met Bev now through your pre-study course. And Bev is also taking a session next week for you. Um, so you'll get to know her a bit more. Um, then you've got a break for lunch. So you've got an so you've got yeah you've got a lunch break <laughs> and then you have practice organization and pdp with sarah in sua3 um and then you at the end of the day you have an hour of study coach so um i'm going to introduce you to the study coach in a minute um but basically what we do at university center sparshall is we have a student role called a study coach um who's basically a second or third year student who has already um, gone through a lot of the process that you guys are going through, who's there to help you as a mentor and provide direct academic support. So they work alongside uh, the, the teaching team and they work closely with me. Um, but what it means is you then get the opportunity to ask even more questions and spend time going through different things with them as well as in class. So that's quite nice. The really good thing this year, which often doesn't happen, so you guys are very privileged, and that's not to make you feel weird, but it, you know, it's actually really exciting, is your study coach this year is, is a student called Charlotte, um, who 
has just finished the vet nurse degree and she's now doing a top up. So we find it quite difficult to get um, to get vet nurse uh, study coaches specifically because you guys are in out so often. Um, so actually Char Charlotte's given a really unique position um, or a unique opportunity for you guys because she's been through the process. She knows exactly what it's like to be a student vet nurse. Um, and you guys as nurses, you have a different university experience than the other courses. So that's really exciting. Um, so then on Tuesday, not expected in. So that's your independent study day. Um, and I would encourage you to get into good habits. Obviously, I appreciate that a lot of you are juggling work and looking after children. Um, yeah, so the study coach is compulsory, Kirsty. Um, but the plan, if you notice, because there's another session on the timetable, um, that we're going to flip you each week because there's um, Charlotte will have half the group on a Monday face to face and half the group on a Thursday. Um, online so it just means that you it's not the same group staying late and equally it's not the same group finishing early basically or starting early so we will be swapping those through um but yeah they are compulsory um to be honest they're invaluable invaluable it's one of those things that as first years um we have the same feedback every year that as first years people find them a little bit tiresome um not really sure how it relates and then when you get to second year a lot of people are like oh wait this is this makes sense and I wish I'd listened more so they are compulsory um but as I say we will be flip-flopping between them so you again I'll send out an email to say which group is expected when so Tuesdays you're not in um and then Wednesdays you are in again we've got individual tutorial um from nine till ten so again most of the time you will not be required in unless I want to see you. Um, and I again, I'll send a separate timetable out to let you know when I'm expecting you. Um, and I, to be honest, I might even give that to you on, Monday, on the Monday I see you. So it's nice paper thing that you've got. Um, then you've got, so from 10.30, you've got Principles of Vet Nursing with Emma. And that's a two hour lecture. Um, and that's again in SUA3. So from a, and a couple have said people about having a map and worried they're going to get lost. Um, you just have to find one classroom. So hopefully that will be quite straightforward. Um, and then this is where the groups, um, the, the separate groups apply. So with, um, with the functional anatomy labs, this is your dissection class. Um, and because of group sizes and to give basically to give you the best learning experience we then split into your group a b c and d so it means one in four weeks you one in every four weeks you will have your lab session and group a for example because the start of the alphabet will go first so group a you will have dissection the first week of term but then you won't have anything then for the next three weeks group second week group b will have dissection no one else will have it and vice and so on so whilst it's quite a jam-packed week like day it does mean that it's only once a month that you will actually have teaching to the same capacity um and then you have jess then from um two o'clock to four o'clock um it, back in seo3 so um the reason why the the timetable is quite condensed um is because it's another one of our uh, covid restrictions so um basically to avoid students having to overcrowd on public transport um we have pushed our lectures back to half 10 so that's why they feel a little bit more condensed um but as i say every day you start at 10 30 and you're done by half past four at the latest so it's it's hopefully not too bad um i know when i was a student i had it dotted all over the place and there were some days that i didn't finish till six so this looks this is although it's busy hopefully it's understandable when it you know as I say you can you can have snacks and whatever in in between so then Thursdays um so you, again you first hour nine to ten is with Charlotte and this is online so as we said this will be alternating weeks and then you have Emma in the labs so this is a slight change where you're supposed to be um but for these labs they are opposite SUA3 so the microbiology labs are in the Sainsbury's building I will show you on a map where the wet labs are because they are a little bit out of the way. um so for Laura with dissections you're in a different labs but for analytical techniques at them you're literally just across the corridor from SUA3 and hopefully by then you're happy where SUA3 is you've been there what one two three four times already in that week um so I'm sure you'll be masters of where you're supposed to be and if you're not just shout just ask any member of staff um where am I supposed to be where do I go and someone help you um 
So then you're in with Emma for two hours for analytical techniques, which is your lab, your lab based lecture. And then you have Bev down at the VN Centre for clinical practicals. Um, so for that week, um, I don't know how people are fit with their PPE, um, but you will need a lab coat. So please do shout if you're struggling and ideally something like your vet nurse uniform, which I've had a few people email about it already. Um, so as I say, please do let me know if you've got any worries. Then you have a break and then you've got me for group tutorial um, from uh, three till four. Now, again, because of the group size, um, I will be doing alternating weeks face to face, um, but there will be resources on ledge. So it does mean that every other week you can finish. You'll be all done and finished um, by what did I say it was half two. So it's not too bad. Um, so that's group A and B. And I'll go back and change the titles. So let's see if this. Yeah, it's not working. Let's change that so we actually get what we're looking for. I didn't think it was working. Is it going to work now? Let's see. No, Kerry, it's fine. Um, so we won't be having, so I tend to, I do want to see you, um, but we tend to, um, I, tr I tend to give you a little bit of a break. Um, so I won't do any individuals the first day. I might see some of you on the Wednesday, um, but it's just because I quite like to catch up with you fairly early on. Um, it is a bit of a balance, to be honest, because it's that thing of if I have you too soon, you might have anything to talk about. But then if I don't see you early enough, then I don't want you to just kind of struggle. So, yeah, there won't be individual tutorials on that first day, but then I will kick it in for um, probably on the Wednesday. I'll start seeing people. Um, so Katie said footwear for the labs is anything that's closed. Yes, absolutely fine. You don't have to wear anything else. I would just bear in mind, particularly for dissections, um, you are going to be cutting things up. Um, so generally, I would suggest that you wear dark shoes. Um, we did have a student the other day who wore white, white trainers. Um, and Emma was very quickly to say, do you want to change those? So that would be my only suggestion. But yeah, any shoes is fine. As long as it's closed, you're absolutely fine. Um, so Rachel was asking where you can get a lab coat from. Um, yes, yeah, so I shared with you a little while ago the Creative Images link. Um, I can share that again. That's not a problem. Um, Creative Images provide us with online. They're like our online shop, so they provide all the PPE. But having said that, you can also buy lab coats on Amazon. More than reasonable. Hate to bit. That's probably bad business being like, go somewhere else. Um, but to be honest, any any lab coat is fine. I personally would try and spend middle way money. Um, you do find the ones that are kind of five pounds. There's a reason that they're five pounds. Um, but yeah, so I'll pop the link back up for creative in images and then you can have a look on there. Um, they're, they're really quick turnaround, particularly because um, because we've staggered your, your starts. Most of the other courses who needed lab coats will have already had them. So they sh you should get them without any problem. Okay, so group C and D, not three and four, C and D. Um, so your timetable is looks very, very similar, um, but there are a few changes. So um, again, this is why it's important to know which group you're in. So again, Monday morning, nine till 10 is, is online, is individual tutorials. That doesn't change, that's just on the timetable. Um, but then instead of having Bev group, um, Group C and D, sorry, my dyslexia is kicking in. <laughs> Group C and D um, have got Jess. So again, in terms of location, you're in SUO4. So you are next door to everybody else. Um, so again, same to build and same principle, um, but I will send out a map so you, and I might even draw on them where they are um, so that you can get to those. Um, so you are in from 10.30 to 12.30 with Jess. Um, oh yes, of course, no problem. There you go. If you want to take a screenshot, I will save this as well and put this in as an image so you've got that. So it's really obvious on the home page. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's your group. So Natasha, you are in. Where have you gone? You're in group D. I say it's purely alphabetical. No other reason than that. So group C and D then. So you've got so 10.30 to 12.30 with Jess for animal husbandry, inheritance and disease. And then you are from you stay in that room. Obviously, we'll let you have food. We're not that horrible. Um, and then you have principles of vet nursing with Denise. Um, so that's two hours. Um, then you have a half an hour break and then you have study coach with Charlotte. But as we said, that's flip flop. So one week on, 
you'll be on that session and then the following week you'll be doing the online so just to give you some variation again your tuesday you're not expected in so that's your independent study day um and then wednesday's following very similar patterns so again you've got individual tutorials um but then from your 10.30 to 12.30, you're in SEO 4 with Sarah for practice organisation and PDP. Then you may, so again, then we split into the groups A, B, C and D. So one once every month, you would then have dissection with Laura in the wet labs. So group C and D, you don't need to worry um, about the dissection for the first two weeks because you're not, you're definitely going to be in there. Um, but group C would be the third week, and group D would be the fourth week. But again, I'll put put together a timetable so you're all clear where you're supposed to be. And then you have um, from half one to sorry, from two to four, you've then got functional anatomy with Bev in SUO4. OK, um, Thursdays look very, very similar. So Thursdays is your is both courses. So both cohorts, although you are all one big happy family. Um, that's your practical day so if you are thinking about studying from home then it would be monday and wednesday that would be online and thursday would be your compulsory day that you'd have to come in um so basically groups c, c and d um would have their vn practicals at half 10 to half 12 with bev and then you have analytical techniques in the lab with emma from half 12 to half two and then we all have group tutorial again at three o'clock um so very very similar as i said before with group tutorial we will do um every other week for compulsory attendance um but i will continue to put things up on ledge for you so do um use those resources um in terms of ledge we'll have an we will do a how to um once you guys are with us um so that you're clear where everything is um so please don't panic i'll do some videos and we can do some extra um tutorials just to go through where everything is Okay, so just a little bit, uh, again, I don't want to teach you to suck eggs, but we sometimes find that timetables can be a bit of a source of stress for people. Um, so first of all, make sure you know what group you're in. Um, as I said before, please don't swap groups unless you've spoken to me specifically. Um, from our point of view as lecturers, um, it's always a fun time of year trying to learn everyone's name. Um, I personally make it my, uh, I, I am a bit sad, but I make it like a personal challenge that by about a month into the course, I like to be able to know everyone's names. Now I have the advantage that I'm your tutor. Um, and even when I was doing the group split, there were there were no names that I was like, oh, I haven't seen those before. Because obviously I've already been through um, your um, applications. I've seen your names, I'm getting familiar with them. Um, I don't yet know faces, but then I, again, I have methods that I'll learn your faces. But with everybody else, it does take a little bit of time, particularly because we only really see you um, for, you know, Denise may only see you for two hours a week. So it's really important you stay in the groups unless you come and speak to me. Um, check, make sure you check Pro Solution. So again, we'll show you where that is. Um, it's very, very unlikely with COVID that there will be any loop any late room changes um, and if they are then we will tell you um, one of the things that we'll agree once everyone's enrolled is how you guys want to be communicated with um, because we have several options we could use teams and particularly if you've got notifications of teams that's quite helpful um, but also we can send out group tutorial emails as well so um, we can always do it so no that's my typo natalia um so you are in group a b c or d there shouldn't be one or two <laughs> i uh i'm just stupid um no it's, it's so it's just one so you've got um so you either you're either in great group a b c or d i will change this before i upload it um and then so most times you're split into you are in your own groups but for teaching so theory teaching group a and b are always together and group c and d are always together and then for your lab days so when you're when you're with laura only um then you being separate groups of a b c and d um but otherwise you're in you're in it together so group a and b are always together group c and d are always together unless it's dissection and then you go down into your separate groups um so one and two that's my that's my point i obviously got distracted with my sandwich or something silly um so that's that fine um as i said before if you're not <laughs> no that's fine um if you're not sure where you're supposed to be please do come and find us um i 
obviously I teach as well um, but again if you're not sure ask any member of staff if you want to clarify where you're supposed to be on the first morning it's absolutely fine um, but basically group A and B are in SUA3 and group C and D are in SUA4 um, but I'll send a map out and just reiterate where you're supposed to be so hopefully I'm sure by Christmas you will be more than happy um, so in terms of study coach as I say um, this is a it's quite a unique year for us um, because your study coach this year has actually been through the vet nurse program in its entirety um, so your study coach this year is charlotte so she is currently doing the applied animal science top up um, so she's on her fourth year of um, the degree of the degree at sparshall um, so because of that she's very 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 capable in advising you in what you should um, and shouldn't be doing and kind of tips around assignments, uses of references, those kind of things. Um, so as I said before, these are compulsory sessions. Um, I would really, really advise you to go to them. Um, but we are going to flip between each group each week. So one week it will be face to face through five, three to four. And then the following week you'll be on Wednesday nine to ten online. Um, so it does mean that you there are there's one week where you get to go home early and then the following week you start early um, just to kind of split it up um, because obviously I know we've all got different commitments um, and just to make the process a bit fairer. So the one other thing that I just need to remind you of um, is your RCVS enrolment. Um, now obviously I know I raised this last week. Um, what I'm hoping to do is um, to get your enrolments done as soon as possible. Um, again, one of the things that I will put up for you next week is your enrolment form. Um, so if you want to fill that out before you come, that would be wonderful. Um, but I'm not going to formally collect them until the 19th of November. Um, I know some people are still waiting on certificates. Um, if there is a delay, please do contact me. Um, it's one of those things that we can't um, continue any further on the course unless we have you enrolled with the RCVS. Um, so in order to do that, we need to have evidence of your GCSEs. Just to remind you, you need to have English, Maths and Science at grade uh, four or a grade C or above. Um, I know for some of you, your science, you're um, using your level three qualification and that's absolutely fine. Um, but as again, make sure if there is any variation that you contact me. Um, Ian's already taken your GCSE certificates, hasn't he? So that's absolutely fine. If Ian's already seen them, um, then I don't need to see them again. He's saving them for me. But if you haven't shared them with Ian yet, make sure you do and then I will obviously get access to them that way. Um, again, I'm going to see your ID, so I will just need to scan a copy of that um, just to send with your application. Um, we need two passport photos. So Curry's asked, can they be digital given it's COVID? Um, yes, that's absolutely fine. Um, I will check with the RCVS just for definite confirmation, but I would assume under the circumstances that's absolutely fine. And then I say I'll upload the registration forms um, actually, I tell you what, I'll email them out. That's probably easier, isn't it? Because then you've got digital format. So I will email those out to you um, beginning of next week. So you've got those. Um, they're very self-explanatory, but can you fill them in in black ink? Because um, the RCVS are quite specific. Um, so just make sure you fill them in in black ink. Use block capitals. If you do make any errors, cross it through rather than using Tipex. Um, but I, I personally would just take time over them. Um, sit down with a cup of tea when you're not stressing and just do them take do it in a timely manner um, and then I will collect them um, the 19th of November is the last date so to be honest with you I will start collecting them um, from the first week so if you have got everything and you want to get it in um, that's absolutely fine we'll do that um, so you've got those okay and then the last little thing just to remind you about is lanyards um, so I will be giving you um, your ID cards um, within the first couple of days so don't um, ideally, actually, on Monday, I'll be giving them to you. Um, so if you haven't uploaded your photo, make sure you do, because that's what we're going to need for your lanyard. Um, if you haven't uploaded by the Monday, all we will do is, is walk you down to student services and physically take your photo. Um, but for easiness, it's just and also it means you get to pick the photo that goes on your lanyard. Um, I know my university form was shocking because it was before we could upload photos um, and it then stuck with me for the four years. Um, so again, if you want to be selective on what photo you have, uh, do make sure you upload a photo that we can use. Um, so I'll be giving your ID cards. Um, on the Monday once we've enrolled you um, and then you just need to wear it all the time but also it means you can then obviously use it as for student discounts which is one of the joys at university that I definitely miss that we don't get to student discount anymore. Um, cool has anyone got any questions at all? I realise I've given you a lot of information um, 
just seeing if there's any other questions. No, I think we've I've, I think I've answered them all again. So yeah, so just to reiterate, um, and I will re-upload everything. So it's group A and B and group C and D. Um, so just make sure you know which group you're in. Um, any assignment based questions? I've had a few people email me um, and I've also had a few people already submit, which is very exciting. Um, just to remind you, we don't do draft reads on this one just because it's a formative and the idea is to see how you get on. Um, but obviously you will get two lots of feedback. Um, so um, that's obviously really helpful. Um, please don't panic about it. I know a couple of people have been like, I don't know if I'm going to do my best. Um, you're already on the course, so <laughs> don't worry that I'm just going to read it and go, this is rubbish, go, go away. Um, it's designed as a way of helping you, so please don't be overly self-critical about it. Um, just do the best you can. Um, and then the feedback, to be honest, is what helps. Um, where do you need to upload the photo? I need to ask Ian Daisy. I'm not sure. So I will email. I'll tell you what, if you haven't emailed... Ian back about confirming um, your intended attention to come um, then that would be wonderful if you do that but otherwise I'll ask Ian and then I'll let you guys know um, hopefully he's still at work so I'll try and get your response today if not tomorrow any other questions no OK, well, um, I'll leave it there then. Um, hopefully you've all been able to access the. Um, oh, another one. Yes, no. So if I turn it in because you're not enrolled, that's fine. So don't worry about it. Um, we'll do it for your second attempt. Um, so that's not a problem. Um, yes, that's the only issue with you with enrolling, like doing it before. But I was keen to get you to, to have it so you could start it. Um, any other things I was going to tell you? Don't think so. Um, next week, obviously, you've got another round of lectures. Um, so you're seeing Bev on Monday, um, Jess on Wednesday and Emma on Thursday. So I will continue to let you know timings through Teams. Um, if you can't access things at the time because of work, that's not a problem. We'll make sure that everything is in place. Uh, Rachel, when do you move into accommodation? Accommodation should have emailed you. So check your, um, oh, when you move into accommodation, can you have family help? Yes, of course you can, yes. Um, I would also insist that your uh, mum makes your bed. Mine did that for the whole of my four years of university. Apparently it's something she liked to do, so make sure she does your bed. Um, but yes, you can absolutely have a family member help um, because obviously it's quite daunting. So yeah, definitely. Um, make sure you've got some supplies as well. Don't forget, you know, things like a can opener and some milk and cereal. Um, and in all seriousness, um, if you are worried about moving out of home, um, not to be patronising in any shape or form, but if you are feeling a little bit stressed, that's absolutely fine. Um, I actually went, moved up, so I'm from this area and I moved four hours up north for university um, and it was incredibly daunting. So if you are feeling a little bit wobbly about it, don't worry um, and just take your time with it come and speak to me for any problems um but yeah i'm really excited like generally really excited to meet you all um so oh lots of comments now uh bear with me one second um is it possible to find out who you're living with i don't know is the answer again email ian sort well um obviously he would have lists um for vet nurses we tend to put you together so it's quite likely that you'll be all together and certainly with covid we're trying to bubble courses so it's likely that you will be with other vet nurses um so that's quite nice uh kirsty where do we park is there a specific student car park um yes and no um basically there's two staff only car parks and then everything else is up for grabs um generally the easiest place to park would be the sainsbury's car park which is behind the sainsbury's building or there's quite a nice uh discreet car park at the library um so that's quite nice to use um, and then obviously you don't necessarily have to fight with people to get there um first just get yes predominantly rachel um i believe that's what they're trying to do to try and bubble you um but equally it's quite nice to have variation so if you do have a second year then they're lovely so you'll you'll i'm gonna get you to meet them anyway um natalia are the clubs within the youth accommodating still happening like yoga and sports um yes so the gym is still open um and uh it's I personally go it's really good value um, it's £100 for the whole year but you can also I think November is the next drop down um, and you can use it 
pretty much well not 24 7 obviously you need to sleep um but it has really long opening hours um and there are other societies still going on at the moment obviously they're socially distant to some degree so there are um minimal numbers but yeah all the sports facilities are still happening i think the equestrian club are still meeting so yeah we can find out some some more information for you um so see Cecilia has asked if you've got a permit for parking. Yes, so we'll sort all that out on the first day. Um, all we need from you is your license plate and your colour of car. Um, but I think that's part of your enrolment form. Um, but yeah, we'll give you um, we give you permit parking. Um, Rachel's asked, do we have time slots for dinner? Yes, I think you do, particularly with COVID. Um, you never used to lunch I think for dinner it was like five until seven but I've got a funny feeling from what I can work out from the other students that you have time slots um and the food is pretty good I have to be honest it's quite a temptation for us as staff and um, that when there's days when there's really good food um because you can spend quite a lot of money for us as staff but um yeah I think that's the case this year that you've got time slots um sorry if you were a late eater <laughs> that was our only our problem but again you slot into it pretty well um the uni I went to we used to have we were all catered we didn't have a choice um and it's surprising how quickly you get used to having eggs and bacon every day um whereas I'm very much a brown flakes love a brown flake um but surprising how quickly at uni you get into having egg and bacon every day um so yeah it all it's it's good food it's nice um Natalia said when do we need our uniform for um vet nurse uniform um ideally I would say um middle of november would be ideal um the only with your clinical so with your vn skills practical with bev you will be needed to wear it um but if you haven't got it and you're worried just give um bev a drop bev an email um, and she'll be able to tell you specifically what she's doing and when she'd like you to have them um but really as soon as possible which is why we mentioned it before the summer so that you had lots of time to get hold of it um but yeah, if you if there is any problems, give Beva, give a call. Uh, do we get the uniform in the same places? Love it. You can. Yep, you can. So that's the nice thing with creative images is you can get um, your vet nurse uniform, you can get your animal handling uniform, and you can get your lab coats from the same area. Um, get it all together. Um, it's it's a I've got a funny feeling the price is what's the word when it's reduced not compensated um but it is oh subsidized there you go so it's it is actually quite reasonable um equally if you want to have a um a rather lovely overall instead of animal uniform that's fine so the animal handling uniform we talked about it over the summer um so it's either um green a green boiler suit which i personally would go for a green boiler suit um just because they're really comfy and they're also really like really really easy to use really universal you literally just chuck them on um but you could or you could wear black trousers um so black dicky style trousers so kind of working trousers and a green polo shirt so to be honest the boiler suit is probably easiest um i had a boiler suit when i was going through uni and it was lovely they're really nice and warm as well because in the winter you can put obviously like your hoodies and stuff under them whereas with your t-shirts it's all the same um is it the same as the animal management course yes yeah it's, it's basically it's our universal campus um so if you have got stuff from previous studies then that'll be the same that's absolutely fine um and then your vet nurse uniform is your striper tunic and your rather lovely um green trousers and then obviously your lab coat um but again don't panic in silence if there are problems getting hold of things just email me let me know um and we can we can definitely arrange something if we need to okay are we good any other questions? Let's say I'm quite happy. Oh, we got another one. <laughs> no, that's fine. Absolutely fine. And to be honest, Casey, I'm really excited for you guys to get started too. Um, I realise this year with COVID, it's been delayed. Um, but as I said at the beginning, we've got more than enough time to teach you everything. Um, but from a slightly selfish tutor point of view, I really like to have students. So I feel a little bit like a lost mum. Um, even though there are students I'm seeing, I like having a tutor group. So I'm really excited to see you. N Natasha, please don't be scared. Um, it's, it's natural to be nervous. It's a big change. Um, but it's also a really exciting, really really exciting adventure and um honestly within a month you will feel like you've been here for years um doesn't mean it doesn't change in the sense of um 
that you haven't you know you haven't got work to do and there's stress and all that kind of stuff but very quickly it feels like you've been there for years and all the lecturers are really lovely um as i say we're all from industry um so uh, apart from jess and sarah we're all nurses um and nurses definitely have a certain personality type let's say um so i'm sure you'll get on on well with all of us um although some of us might be more eccentric but i'm that's me talking to myself that's from being an ecc nurse that's slightly eccentric um but yeah you guys will be absolutely fine um we'll all get to know you it'll all be grand and we'll have a great time um but if you are worried obviously give me ping me an email as always doors open don't feel you've got to wait till the 2nd of November either um so you can you're more than happy for you guys to contact me um also just before I forget to com avoid confusion um I'm helpfully getting married during half term um which means that when I come back I won't be Joe Bond <laughs> so if you start getting emails from a different Joe um my signature will be the same everything will be the same but if you get stuff it pops up from Joe Garraway it's me um it's just that I'm getting married so that'll just be a bit of confusion yeah it's fun it's nice um, so this happened a while ago, so it wasn't going to affect you guys, but obviously now you get the fun of the of the name change. Um, so yes, so on that note, I will let you guys disappear. I'm really looking forward to seeing you a week on Monday, so it's almost here. Um, if you do have any questions in the meantime, I say ping me an email. It's not a problem. Um, I'd rather you come and speak to me than worry. Um, and I will see you all guys super soon. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Um, thank you for all the congratulations. That's very sweet. Um, and I will see. You. Oh, referencing. Rachel, what about referencing? Got it in there just in time. I'm just going to press the leave button. So what about referencing? So remind you, you're using APA 7th edition. Um, and honestly, the best place to start would be the, U the University of Portsmouth referencing website, um, which if you go back onto the academic uh, sources um, lecture that we did, it's got the website on there. Um, that's the greatest one because it does it for you so you literally put in what reference you've got so if it's a book if it's an edited book it's a website whatever it will then tell you um oh yeah no that's fine Natalia I'll come to that question in a second um but it talks you through everything so you honestly cannot go wrong if you use the website it will tell you where the f the where the full stops are supposed to be where oh great thank you Kerry um where the full spots to be where the commas are what's supposed to be in italics what's not supposed to be in italics it makes it beautiful so use that website um and if you then have any problems please don't panic um so what's the website for referencing so I think Kerry's just shared the link um can you do it on word you can yeah you can it just means on word you're gonna there is an automatic you can use a citing thing on on word i believe i've never found it um but just be careful because it might be different from the university's guidelines so i normally start I'm a, I'm a little bit sad i tend to use it like type it out myself um but you do then get in the rhythm so it should it should be okay but as i say um don't panic about too much do what you can um if we need to tweak it after your first attempt um then we can obviously do that together so i think the go home message for today is don't panic just enjoy the enjoy the journey and we'll work through it together um natalia what shoes are good for hand handling um so you're supposed to wear um they they would like you to wear work type boots um that they don't have to be steel toe caps um for your clinical um practicals just some black shoes are right so if you want to you can wear a pair of sketches whatever you want to do um but to be honest anything some kind of if you've got riding boots if you've got walking boots if you've got just a pair of um kind of timberland styles probably none of you wear timberlands now um but just some kind of kind of hardy lace-up boots are, are great um i personally have a pair of um i can't remember what mine are called Mine are just literally some brown work boots that I picked up from uh, Mole Valley, um, but they don't have to be steelies. So just anything that you're comfortable in um, is absolutely fine. It's just, it's partly it's for your own safety, um, but also closed toe shoes being around the animals. Because um, for example, Bev will get you playing with things like the donkeys. Um, you don't want open toe shoes with the donkeys. They could poop on you or they could stand on you. So just something that's comfy um, and that will be great. Cool. Any questions at all? It's absolutely fine if there's still some. Going once, going twice, 
Okay, three times cool. I will see you all on the 2nd of November. Have a lovely half term break. Please do not panic. I will see you all super soon. Alison, if you want to stay on the live, we can just have a quick chat. That's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all super soon. So take care. And I say, just be really excited. I know I am. All right. See you later. That's quite okay, Kerry. I'll see you soon. That's okay, Rachel. See you soon. Make sure you contact Ian about moving in. Are you right, Alison? Sorry you've been having problems. How does this work? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, that's taken me an hour. <laughs> Bless you. Was it? I'm just going to stop the recording and then we can.